Good evening. This meeting of the Winthrop Town Council for July 22, 2014 is now called to order. Do you also stand? Council of Boyer. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Council Cross, would you call the roll? Council Calla. Council Sanford? Yeah. Council Boncori? Council Barone? Present. Council Latieri? Yeah. Council Boyajan? Present. Council Mayo? Vice President Del Vento. Present. President Gill. Present. Thank you. The quorum is present. Uh, we will move on to the minutes for July 1. Could I have a motion? Motion. Motion, motion by Councilor Letiri, seconded by? Second. Councilor Vento. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes. We had a public hearing on the zoning bylaws for the Center Business District at the last meeting, which we can had continued to this meeting. Is there anybody who would like to have any input, positive or negative, on the center business district zoning proposal? If not, we'll close that hearing and we'll move on to public comment. Mr. Tagliano. Thank you, Dr. President. Uh, Dr. Tagliano, Tagliano, Precinct 5, and Premier Precinct. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a couple of things. Uh, did want to uh, commend the uh, Public Works Department for the great work they're doing in replacing that very large gas main down in our neck of the woods and floor and so forth. It's been a complex project, but uh, they've handled it quite well. And the police department with the details have, have, have done a terrific job too. So they're keeping the uh, traffic situation uh, and the disruption down to an absolute minimum. So between public works and police are doing their job on that. Um, uh, brothers, I would like to address though one of the issues listed under new business. Now, I don't know if this is a, the, exact, <coughs> the best place on the agenda to do that or not. Uh, whatever yeah, this is the best spot. This, this is the good spot to address. Well, thank you. Uh, oh, the specific item that I would like to address under new business is a comment regarding the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Atlantis Marine application. Um, I received a copy of the public notice from the Army Corps of Engineers asking for public comments before uh, the end of this month. I personally like to recommend that this council not approve the, um, uh, the request by the Army Corps of Engineers uh, that they're asking for right now. This is basically, um, to put it mildly, an attempt by the Army Corps to gloss over many past uh, deficiencies in terms of lack of adequate permitting uh, for, this, for this particular site. And uh, I would specifically request that the uh, council go on record with a message to the Army Corps of Engineers to, to that effect. It's a very serious issue. Uh, and one of the, for example, portions of the Army Corps of Engineers official notice that in some parts of the world, it's, it says on the first page, for example, that portions of this facility, the Atlantis facility, have been previously permitted, but it doesn't say which portion. That needs to be, uh, I think, somewhat uh, detailed. Uh, in the past, for example, back in uh, 2004, <coughs> over a decade ago, when the project was in its incipient stages, the Army Corps sent the owner of the site a notice that a major portion of the uh, marina work underway at that time was not properly permitted or licensed by the Army Corps. And that is still uh, uh, a major portion of the work that was completed without proper licensing and permitting. Uh, <coughs> also, there have been a number of incidents on this site uh, that has a significant negative environmental impact on the, not only the site, but the, but the town as a whole. For example, the, uh, there, I have a copy of, a, of an incident report from the Harbor Master Department, for example, and they did a great job a few months ago responding to a citizen complaint of what was observed as open sewage flow from one of the vessels, one of the new vessels, at the new at the expanded marina that pouring sewage right 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 into the water um, in the Atlantis Marina area. This was documented and verified by the by the Harbor Master. I have a copy of that. Uh, it's in the report. Also uh, the a report for example from the Division of Marine Fisheries with respect to this site and 
They specifically say, for example, that due to the operation, of, I'm sorry, due to the expansion of the Bahama, marine fisheries may need to reclassify the buffer zone around the marina, possibly reducing the available area in time for shell fishing and adjacent flats, i.e. The, the clam flats and everything else around the Atlantic marina might have to be reduced because of the potential for, uh, you know, for, for pollutants entering the water at that point. Um, it also, for example, states, this is the Division, the division of Marine Fisheries, increases in marine use often result in increases in fecal polar for the not only for the site, but in general. Uh, a few months ago, there was a DEP hearing on this, on the, on this issue, which is necessity the issue. And at that time, a number of us, including myself and friends of Velvet Mars, <coughs> went on record and recommended to the DEP as a part of the DEP record for this particular site, which is still open. DEP has not yet gotten back to the town. It, and <coughs> we went on record as saying that all the work that has been done should, should not be permitted, um, should not be granted any kind of a grandfather clause. In fact, if you look at the title of the uh, of the Army Corps of Engineers record of uh, uh, document, uh, President, it, it sort of speaks for itself. It says that uh, this is a request for an after the fact uh, permit application. I'm not a lawyer, but even I can read between the lines on that one as to what that means. Mm -hmm. A lot of work has been done um, of questionable legality, if you will, and uh, they're looking to essentially exonerate all the work that has been done and to validate. I think that would set up a terrible precedent, a temporal a terrible precedent for the town, not only, not only for this site, but for any anyone else in the town that might have some eyes to do something like this. We I went on record and recommending for example that the existing uh, you know work that has been done should be removed and the friends of Bella Marsh went on record at the same time saying the same thing, and that's exactly what I'd like, what I would like to recommend to the town council at this point in making that kind of a recommendation to the Army Corps of Engineers. Sorry for taking up so much time. No, nope, that's not a problem. I think we have everything except I'm not sure we have that Harbor Masters incident report, so if you could just sure. email that to me or, or give me a copy. Well, of I'll, I'll give you a hard copy right now, Mr. Yep. President, and I'll that's give you good. a copy as well. Just okay. To on and the safe side. Um, it would, I think it would be advisable for you as well to to send comments yes okay it's, 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 that's the point john would you email the council what? would you send that to the whole yes council? Oh, of course i would yes. thank you <coughs> the, everything that you've mentioned in there is pretty much in our draft but i'm oh, just not okay. sure that this okay. particular yes it is but I'll, I'll i'll redo it okay thank you okay. thank you thank you again for your time any further public comment? Uh, yes, I'm David Kelston from 550 Pleasant Street. I support everything Mrs. Bigliano has said. We have to do precinct data. Is that one, two? Two. And if I could sit yeah. here, I just want yeah. to read a few letters and hand copies of these to uh, the members of the council. Uh, first, the trustees of the Atlantis Condominium have written a letter to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers opposing their request. And I'd like to read this letter into the record and then hand copies to it, It's the already council. been circulated to the council, but if you want to read it, you can. Okay. It's addressed to Mr. Catelli of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's from our uh, property manager who writes, I write in response to the public notice of July 1, 2014, on behalf of the trustees of the residents at Atlantis Marina Condominium. Applicant Atlantis Marina Docks LLC's premises are within the condominium. They are a part of our condominium. The trustees respectfully urge that the Army Corps of Engineers not approve applicant Marina Docks permit application and that the court take no action that could be construed to interfere with the town of Winthrop's ability to regulate the marina in question <coughs> until and unless the marina's operations are determined to be in conformity with Winthrop town law. As shown in the attached December 10, 2013 letter from Winthrop's Town Council, complement in page PC, and in the Winthrop Building Department cease and desist <coughs> letter of December 12, 2013, the marina's operations are currently in violation of Winthrop law, and the matters identified in the attached letters have not been addressed by applicant marina docks. The trustees understand that the town of Winthrop 
has stated its intent to file a lawsuit to remedy the marina's violations of local law. See the attached email. We must all adhere to the law and respect the rules, and discretionary benefits should not be extended to those who have not done so. This is on behalf of all the trustees of our condominium. Our trustees are trying to do, be good citizens. Um, we are trying to um, adhere to the law and encourage the council to adhere to the law. We are not able to file a lawsuit uh, to stop what's going on at the marina. We don't have standing to enforce town law, but we hope that the town itself will enforce the cease and desist order and the determination that the marine operations are generally in violation of, uh, of Winthrop zoning law. And uh, Mr. President, you have this letter and it's I do, yes. Okay. Uh, I would note that earlier to the DEP, uh, President Gill, you wrote a letter, I'm just going to read one brief part of it. Based on the above and the testimony presented at the public hearing, including the opinion that this project is no longer an emergency, that the alleged emergency was temporary and has been alleviated, I urge that the DEP not grant a license for this project as presented unless and until all zoning, health, and safety issues are addressed and approved by local Winthrop boards and authorities. They haven't been addressed yet. Uh, the same issues are before DEP as raised by the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, I note that um, Council Neal wrote a similar letter and Mr. Peglion wrote a similar letter. And finally, if it's not in the record, I would like to put in the record a letter from one of our residences, our residents who have been active in this matter, Deborah Kuhn, her lengthy letter with many attachments to Mr. Kelly of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We will be submitting a number of additional letters <coughs> opposing this application. As I read this application, I'll just make, uh, does the council have this letter? Yes. Okay. And anything that you wanted to put into the record, even though I have it, just give it to Denise and then I'll Okay. Go. But if the, are those are multiple copies of the multiple same thing? Multiple copies of the same thing. Okay, so we just need the one from the record. Okay. And here's the trustee's letter. I have been trying to get information from the Ar Army Corps of Engineers as to the timing of this application. Why does it come up now after the council has said it's going to take action? The timing is suspicious. I got minimum information from them and had to file a Freedom of Information Act request, which I did, which hasn't been responded to. But I note that there's something new in this application we've never seen in any other application, the application of DEP for the Conservation Commission. Now they are saying there will be 15 vessels with year-round occupants at the marina. Whether we want the House votes or not, this seems to me to be an, an attempt by the applicant to do an end run around this council and the enforcement of its rules. This is the first time there's been this sort of explicit reference in any sort of permit application. And if you look at the application materials to the Army Corps of Engineers, they don't mention that fact. So there have been ex party or uh, uh, private communications between the applicant, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which haven't been made public, and will if and when my uh, uh, Freedom of Information Act is, uh, is responded to, my request is responded to. On behalf of the trustees and residents at our condominium, we respectfully request that you notify the Army Corps of Engineers your opposition to this plan. Uh, you notify them of the, uh, the council's attempt to take action to enforce its laws. And I think that you might also ask for a public hearing, which um, there are many issues of interest to the public. The Army Corps of Engineers appears to be reluctant to have a public hearing. They don't do it as a matter of right. They don't inform the butters as a matter of right. Um, uh, but they do say that they will hold a public hearing if there appears to be need for it. And this is certainly a matter of public interest. Thank you very much. David, the, the second item, you had to include the opposition and request a public hearing. What was the second piece? You had, th you had three things you wanted to us to include. Yeah. One was the opposition. Right. The second one I didn't catch, and the third one was the public hearing. Uh, well, <laughs> I forgot. I've forgotten what the second one was. I was speaking okay. extemporaneously, okay. but uh, I, I'm sure I, it's I, in I, there. I, 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 I think you might you might Freedom indicate that, that this that this appears to be an attempt to interfere with the jurisdiction of the town to enforce its own rules and make its own regulations, yep. control its waterways, and control its uh, its land connected to the waterways. Great. Thank you very Thank much, you. David. Can I ask you a question? Yes. The, uh, I yes. just have to um, announce to the council and to the public that we've had, a, we've had a concern 
by a citizen that we have violated the um, open meeting law and we uh, at this point I'm going to err on the side of caution the open meeting the new open meeting law says there will be no discussion public comment will be public comment so until we hear otherwise um, from now on um, I'm going to not have any discussion during public comment and in fact I've I had meant to bring up later on in the meeting that I'm going to ask Copeland and Page to come here, give us an open session um, presentation on the open meet, the new open meeting law, and that's and that is because we've had a question as to the propriety of my and the council's and other community boards violating the open meeting law. So I'm going to err on the part of caution. And leave it that we will have no discussion. Sorry, Councilor Mill. I'd be happy to talk with you after the meeting. Uh, I, 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 so let me have. let me put it in a different way. Would it be appropriate? Is it appropriate for me to ask whether or not the the condominium association has filed a suit for relief against the marina? He just David just said that they have. That they well, we, uh, we have no standing. standing to file a lawsuit to enforce town regulations. I'm an attorney. Right, exactly. And we, 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 sim we simply can't do it. We could file a lawsuit under our condominium covenant. But it's quite <coughs> okay, we're not going to get into the deliberation yet. That's <laughs> been filed. just going to be coming. And the, 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 the town has filed, is in the process of filing that lawsuit. Just, just on the second uh, point, I think it was to point out the uh, violation notices and the response. Thank you. So, Glad you were paying attention. Yeah. Any further public comment? So, yes, great. No, I, I just, I, I, I understand that there's been a cease and desist. Yes, they have. And, and, and what does that, what, what, ha what is the definition of a cease and desist? What does it mean? Have they cease and desist or they cease and decide not to desist? Chief. A cease and desist is to cease your activities immediately upon the inspectional services audit. Um, failure to do so brings us into the next stage in Superior Court, which would be an injunction against the Lances Marina. Um, Cope, that, that is in Copeland and Page's hands, and uh, I believe that they're directed by the uh, town manager prior to him um, going to training uh, to head in that direction. So and I'll follow up on that. That would be great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for indulging um, me. On, on the rules and ordinances, um, if Councilor Del Vento Vice President Devento will just give a quick overview of the um, zoning changes for the Center Business District. The um, Rules and Ordinance Committee met um, Councilor Boncori is, uh, is on his way and he has all the fine details. I will just say we met last night for well over two hours at a, at a, at a continued meeting. Um, so we've met a number of times, probably in the range of, I'm guessing, five to six hours minimum on this um, rezoning. And we had some members of the planning board stop by, um, cool. and they individually had answered questions on their own. Stuff sure, it's okay. And uh, there were some some minor tweaks, some renumbering of the proposed ordinance. There were no major changes. There was just, just a few little language changes, um, a typo here or there, um, renumbering of the ordinances to fit into our uh, <coughs> guide, uh, into our bylaws. But um, Council Boncori is hopefully will be arriving with the revised, properly numbered, um, corrected version. Okay. And did you guys, oh, and sorry. If, and if Council well, Verona has anything to add. I just wanted to add that I, uh, I know we've said this in the past, but I, I really want to recognize uh, the planning board for their efforts. I, know, I am, I agree. And, and this was a long uh, process that they went through, a very complete process. And um, I was not only impressed and pleased with the planning board but the, the uh, back and forth with rules and ordinances last night uh, the review of the document was was truly impressive and especially to see the meeting end at uh, after 9 30 and i really appreciate everybody's efforts in that yeah. but and being part of the premier uh, precinct five is, is <laughs> way out, i was excited about last night's meeting i was there as, as a council person not necessarily on the committee but it allows an opportunity for a lot of good things to happen in the senate district and, and not only there, but going beyond. This was focused on the center business district right now. There's some large parcels of land there uh, that potentially could be developed tastefully and resp responsibly, and a lot of uh, 
good input and a lot of interest from developers coming forward. Uh, we want to see tasteful and responsible development, not only in the Senate Business District, but throughout Winthrop. And I know the Planning Board is looking forward to working on some of the other districts and working with the council to move some other things forward. So and I think it achieved, it's achieving one of the goals that we had in that it's, it's making the process not easy, but simple. Uh, more direct and, and uh, it's, it's making the process, like I said, easier and more direct, but not still, still maintaining the, the, the integrity. quality mm -hmm. and integrity. And, and the one thing I want to ask, and we always add, say developers, well, this mm -hmm. will give the, actually the existing owners um, potential to do things that they may have wanted to do for a long time, just that it was, was a, would have been a, a long ordeal for them to do it, um, especially for the smallest size building under 5,000 square feet. They'll be able to actually maybe make some improvements and make it beneficial for them to help improve their, their business as well as the center district. Good job. You didn't get to the um, limousine. Right. No, we, we tabled that because. Okay. Right yeah, you know you had enough to do on the other yeah. one. Okay. We missed dinner. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, anything else on the committee reports? If not, we'll move into the co town manager's report. Mr. Who's McKenna is off on a. Mr. McKenna was off on a conference, so it took two guys to replace him, Tim and Terry. And uh, Mr. Mail, did you have a... I was just curious who was in charge tonight. Of what? Tim oh, oh. Uh, let's we, see we have said, who's tonight, so I am. All right, so if we go... Uh, that's right. You have to do it. Yeah, pass, we pass the torch tomorrow night at midnight. All right, we just... <laughs> at your house. I, I just wanted to make sure we were listening to the right person. <laughs> yes, we are. All right, Tim, you have okay, three minutes. Sure. Um, so just a few things to update the council on. Um, the town received Green Communities uh, grant from the Department of Energy Resources for 235000 It's primarily for uh, programs within the uh, school buildings. It includes at the coming school. It includes weatherization, hot water pump, air handlers, um, and at the middle school, it includes uh, an EMS, an uh, energy management system, actually includes that at the coming school as well, hot water pump, and then uh, $60,000 for a boiler uh, for the ice rink. Uh, so kudos to uh, Joe Demilovich for his work on this. Um, this is, you know, we just got this word last week. Um, so the next step is to meet with Guardian Energy and the utility company. We've got to take, take advantage of any rebates that are out there as well. Um, so um, when Jim gets back, we'll work on uh, executing. It's a two-year grant, so we have time to spend. Um, so that's one item. Secondly, there is a motion that you'll be taking up or referring to finance, hopefully, uh, later on in the meeting. It's to transfer $18,070 $18, from sale of land to fund some uh, projects at the library, specifically to install automatic doors uh, for just under $8,000, and then $8,500 for a uh, fire panel replacement, which is uh, badly needed over there. And then there's 10% contingency built into that. Uh, and finally, from me, just uh, on the finances, not much to update. We're busy closing the fiscal year, and uh, our goal is to get uh, all the reporting into uh, DOR uh, by September and and then uh, hopefully get our free cash certified shortly thereafter. But once we submit, we're kind of at their mercy to, to go through and, and uh, process it and, and notify us. So that's all I have. Thank you, Tim. Chief? Good evening. I uh, just want to bring your attention to National Night Out. is actually August 5th. It's from 5 to 8 at the police headquarters here. We'll be blocking off the uh, Metcalf Square area. Uh, we will have live music on the town hall uh, front lawn. Uh, Action Ambulance is going to participate as a co-sponsor along with Massport. Um, the fire department is doing a fire safety house for us. Highland Real Estate is having a, uh, a bike raffle, a brand new bike raffle for everyone that shows up. You can get free tickets to Highland Real Estate. Um, many other police departments are coming, Boston Police, State Police, Transit Police, the Sheriff's Department. Uh, so we're in for a very good night. There's going to be a Jaws of Life demonstration also from the fire department down by the fire headquarters. And, uh, They'll use a uh, surplus car that doesn't operate anymore um, in order to, to move the surplus property that uh, is no longer functioning. Um, it would be a good uh, training exercise for them. Uh, the Explorers just returned from their conference. They did uh, extremely well. Uh, they placed um, second place in white collar crime. They have a first place, first place in a um, 
crime scene, and they also have a second place, another, another category, and a fifth place. Um, no one else in Massachusetts has ever taken back an award a trophy except for the Franklin Police Department. It's the only other agency that it actually has brought back uh, awards in the National Conference of Explorers. So um, we've had several wins over the many years. Uh, and I just want to point that out, Sergeant Rogers and Lieutenant Scarpa, uh, amongst the, all, all the other volunteers in the police department and from other police departments that help train these explorers. It's a great program. Um, they did very well uh, during their, during their week-long conference. Um, just want to also point out there was a scam going around over the weekend for a Ponzi scam. Um, and what they were saying was they were deputy sheriffs from the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department and didn't go down and buy a green dot card at CVS um, that they would come and arrest them. Um, again, the Sheriff's Department doesn't operate in that fashion. The transcript is, uh, is doing a story for us uh, to make the public aware of that. And also another scam over the weekend was the publisher declaring, uh, declaring those sweepstakes um, in which they would ask for money, 2,500 to send it um, in order to get the million dollar check. Um, so we've had several residents fall for other scams throughout the year. Um, so I just want to make everyone aware of that. Don't go by these cards. Don't give up your account numbers. Don't give up your phone numbers, social security numbers. Um, several B and E's over the weekend uh, that were solved by the detective unit. I just want to bring it to your attention. One was on Bellevue, one on Main Street. Uh, the detectives worked hard with the patrol force to bring one person into custody. Um, he's now being held at the National Street Jail. Um, so it was a great job. You might have heard about several beginnings. They're working to clear the other one with the Revere Police Department. Um, and the final one is a child safety um, money that came from the Speaker's Office and this year's uh, state budget of $250,000. Uh, myself and the superintendent of schools is working on the um, what best to spend that money on. Uh, this is a one-time spending mechanism, so we will concentrate on the uh, International Association of Chiefs of Police survey, safety survey that was done two years ago, and all the requirements that we need to cut up on. Um, security cameras, door locks, changing locks, remastering the, the two schools, Fort Banks and the Cummings, is, is our main concentration for this grant money. So again, um, that state delegation is working hard. We appreciate the funding. Thank you, Chief. <coughs> Acting co-town manager, yeah. Thursday through Sunday. Thank you. I just want to report Chief Lenny because he also has um, some information to add to the town manager's report. Right. Yeah, I have him on that. Um, on the um, Explorers, we had them, uh, we recognized them at the last last year when they won the award. Um, if it's okay with the council, I'd like to bring them in again. Would you I, I, uh, just uh, caution on August 5th is your next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have Helping out during National we're, Night Out. We're going to have to change that. What? Our next meeting on August 5th. Can we change that? <laughs> National, National Night Out. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it later on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chief Flanagan, some good news. Yes. Um, I got a letter from the MWRA with a check on board. It was made out to Peter Gill, Council President, Tom <laughs> Winter. <laughs> and closed. Please find a check in the amount of $759,902.05 which represents payment to the town fiscal year 2015 in accordance with the memorandum agreement between the town and the MWRA. Uh, the annual uh, payment is tied to the consumer price index. It was up 2.7 percent, so the 759,902 is up from 744,491 from the previous year. It is the last payment, it's the 10th payment of the 10 year contract, so this is a negotiation. Thank you. And you want to mention something about the polls, Chief? The poll yes, update? Uh, we had a meeting, uh, all the utility companies in Malden about two weeks ago at the Malden Emergency Center. Uh, they are in town now, all of the utility companies, surveying what's left. And there's about 85 polls left. And they're just negotiating because. Uh, the PLM poll line management <coughs> website, there's a little confusion on who's in po on the polls. They have to come off the polls in order. It's kind of a union thing. Nobody touches anyone else's wires. We did make a list of 20 polls that we feel urgent. We got them all, just about all off the main drags. They're going to go into the business district. 
Woodside and Putnam Street, the two that come down in the storm. But come August, the utility companies will come up with a plan and they will be working in force in winter to continue to cut back on the poles that we do have. Thank you. Um, under old business, Council, Council of Councilman Corey, um, you must have heard us talking about you. Oh, I didn't, but that's all right. <laughs> Uh, Council uh, Vice President uh, Burrow, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you want first? He gave a, uh, oh. Nick gave a, a quick pre presentation, but now we're to the point that we can do a motion. Okay. Um, and the I make a motion that we add a new chapter to the Wicked Town Ordinances entitled Center Business District. Okay. It'll be chapter 17.50. Special provisions applicable to the Senate district, business district. Within the Senate business district, the following provisions for site plan and design review and special permits apply. Where these provisions conflict with other sections of the winter zoning bylaws, the provisions of this chapter shall apply. Within the Senate business district, the planning board shall conduct site plan and design review and shall act as the special permit granting authority for all uses authorized by special permit and designated SP in the table of uses. Chapter 17.50010, the purpose clause. The purpose of this section is to promote development in downtown Winthrop by encouraging the redevelopment, reuse, or renovation of properties in a manner compatible with community character to provide for a mix of uses in the same structure or on the same lot, to manage parking requirements, to foster downtown development, and to achieve a more streamlined review, including guidance for design and site plan review. Section 17.50.020 is the applicability clause. Site plan and design review has two levels, major site plan and design review and minor site plan and design review. Subsection A is threshold for major site plan and design review. There's new construction or alterations of a building as to create or result in more than 10,000 square feet gross floor area. Section two change of use to more than 10,000 square feet of gross floor plan area, which requires additional or more parking. Subsection B is a threshold for minor site plan and design review. New construction addition, this is number one, new construction addition or alteration of a building so as to create a result in between 5,000 and 10,000 square feet gross floor area. Section two, is change of use to between 5,000 and 10,000 square feet gross floor area, which requires additional or more parking spaces. Section three is construction, alteration, or expansion of a parking lot, including changes to parking spaces, circulation aisles, driveway access, or location of landscaped areas. Section four is modification to site plan previously approved by the planning board. Section 17.50.030 is procedures. Uh, there are by right applications. When an application for building or occupancy permit is for use available as a right of way in the winter zoning law, the application will go to the building uh, commissioner. And those are for areas under 5,000 gross square feet. Section B is minor site plan and design review projects. On those, the planning board shall review and approve. Approve with conditions or not approve the site plan within 30 days of receipt of the site plan and all other materials as requested. That's for areas between 5,000 square feet and 10,000 square feet. No building for occupancy permit shall be issued by the building inspector without one 
written notification of approval by the site plan <coughs> of the planning board, or two, unless 30 days elapsed from the date of the submittal of the site plan without action being taken by the planning board. The 30 days may be extended if the planning board approves a request from the applicant for an extension of time for the consideration of the plan, and this extension is sent to the building commissioner. <laughs> the planning board will not conduct an advertised meeting on minor site plan projects, but shall invite the applicant to the meeting and shall post the agenda which lists the site plan review as an item under review. Section C, major site plan and design review projects. The planning board shall hold an advertised and noticed public hearing on applications categorized as major site plan and design review. Again, that's 10, over 10,000 square feet. Applications for those as for as of right projects. The hearing must be held within 45 days of receipt of all materials. Alternatively, the planning board sh shall conduct its review at a noticed public meeting per minor site review plan and design review above. No building or occupancy permit shall be issued by the building commissioner, number one, without written notification of approval of the site plan by the planning board, uh, number two, unless 60 days elapse from the date of submittal of the site plan without action by the planning board. The 60 days may be extended if the planning board approves a request from the applicant for an extension of time for the consideration of the plan. And this extension is sent to the building commissioner. Section D, special permit applications. When the proposed project requires a special permit, the planning board will conduct, conduct site plan and design review concurrently with the special permit public hearing. Using the procedures outlined in this chapter in the Mass General Laws Chapter 48 for special permits. Concurrent review applies to either major or minor site plan and design review requiring a special permit. Section 17.50.040 pre-submission review. <coughs> Prior to investing in detailed professional design in or engineering expertise for site plans, it is strongly encouraged that the application reviews the proposed project with the planning board. A preliminary concept plan, photographs, and a plot plan will assist the discussion. The submitted material must provide the board with sufficient information about the project so they can identify issues and provide guidance. At this review, which will be included in the public notice and agenda for the planning board meeting, the board may vote to waive the applicant's need to submit an application for site planning design review. Under these provisions, or it may waive certain submission requirements. Section 17.50.050 is the application materials. Section A is minor site plan and design review. The following materials, unless waived by the planning board during pre-submission review, are required to be submitted for minor site plan and design review. The planning board may request additional and or supplemental material to enable it to complete minor site plan and design review. An application is incomplete unless all requested materials are supplied or unless the planning board has waived the items. A plan or plans that allow for the property and project to be clearly identified and reviewed must include the following. Boundary lines, dimensions and locations of all existing and pro proposed structures, all easements, restrictions and covenants, description of any proposed grade changes with existing topography, drawing of the parking lot, indicating parking spaces, loading areas, access and egress, location of signage, outdoor lighting, outdoor storage, and trash disposal areas, existing and proposed planting, landscaping, and screening, drawing of the facade of the structure with information on materials to be used, 
In addition, it must provide a copy of any variances or special permit associated with the property or its use. Section B, major site planning design review. The following materials, unless waived by the planning board during pre-submission review, are required to be submitted for major site plan and design review. The planning board may request additional and or supplemental material to enable it to complete major site plan and design review. This may include a traffic study. An application is incomplete unless all requested materials are supplied. A plan or plans with the information re requested above under minor site plan and design review, but also elevation and floor plans of existing and proposed buildings. Calculations of floor area and outdoor area as applicable, <coughs> devoted to various principal uses. Calculation of parking requirements, requested parking waivers shall be noted on the parking plan. The plan shall include title block showing address, scale, north arrow, sale and signature of the registered architect, engineer, land surveyor, or landscape architect responsible for a particular component of the site plan. And a locust plan at one inch equals 200 feet scale showing abutting lots. Section 15.50.060, coordination with other boards. As applicable, the planning board shall transmit a copy of the site plan and design review application to the appropriate boards, commissions, and staff of the town of Wood. Design standards is 17.50.070. The planning board shall ensure that the following criteria are met during the site plan and design review. The design standards are intended to promote quality development, <coughs> emphasizing the center business district's pedestrian scale development pattern and the desire for development that is hum in harmony with the existing scale and massing in the district. Subsection A is building scale. New buildings and or subsequent alterations shall incorporate features to add visual interest while reducing the appearance of bulk or mass. Such features shall include varied facades, roof lines, roof heights, and materials. <coughs> Subsection 1. Buildings shall relate to the pedestrian scale by A. Including an appropriate architectural de detail to add visual interest along the ground floor of all facades that face streets, squares, pedestrian pathways, parking lots, or other significant pedestrian spaces. B, articulating the base, middle, and top of the facade by using cornices, string cornices, step backs, and other similar features. Subsection two, continuous length of flat blank walls adjacent to streets, pedestrian pathways, or open spaces will, shall not be permitted. Subsection B, roof form. New construction shall, one, new, new construction shall include new development above existing buildings and or substantial alterations. Shall incorporate roof forms which will harmonize with the historic architecture of downtown Winthrop. Subsection two, mechanical equipment located on roofs shall be screened, organized, and designed as a component of the roof design and not appear to be a leftover or added on element. Section three, C, C, entrances. All primary commercial and residential building at entrances shall be visible from the right of way and the sidewalk and shall have an entrance directly accessible from the sidewalk. Section two. Where parking is located to the rear of a building, any rear entrance is to be visible and accessible from the parking lot. Directional signage to the building entrance shall be installed all, on all entrances to have sufficient illumination at nighttime. Section three, doors shall not extend beyond the exterior facade into pedestrian pathways. 
Subsection D, external materials and appearance. Sub subsection one, predominant wall material shall be a wood, brick, stone, or composite material consistent with the neighborhood and approved by the planning board. If painted or coated, only a non-metallic finish will be used. Cladding materials should be consistent on all facades with the exception of special design elements such as gables or dormers. Awnings and canopies shall be compatible with the architectural style of the building. Colors and patterns used for awnings and canopies shall be subdued and compatible with existing awnings on adjacent buildings. Three, except for minor trim, the building wall shall, the building shall avoid the appearance of reflective materials, such as porcelain, enamel, or sheet metal, and window panes shall be non-reflective. Section four, ground floor commercial building facades facing streets, squares, or other significant pedestrian spaces shall contain transparent windows encompassing a minimum of 40% of the facade surface unless weighed by the planning board. Would you like a break and I'll read a few pages? Uh, you can read them. Subsection E. Right? I, I think I have the same one. Correct, correct me if I miss anything. Go ahead, you go with this one. Subsection E, landscaping and sidewalk amenities to the maximum extent possible projects shall provide pedestrian friendly amenities such as outdoor seating patios, porches or courtyards. Site landscaping shall be maximized. Large windows that open to, to open to provide the experience of open air dining are encouraged. Two pathways, sidewalks designed to connect the street to rear parking areas of the adjacent developments are encouraged to further the goal of providing safe pedestrian access to businesses within downtown one period. period. Businesses, period. Period. This is, okay. <coughs> F, subsection F. Service areas, utilities, and equipment services in, lo in loading areas and mechanical equipment utilities shall be unobtrusive or sufficiently screened so that they are not visible from streets or primary public open spaces shall incorporate effective techniques for noise buffering from adjacent uses. Subsection G. Vehicle and pedestrian features. Vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle features shall be designed to promote connectivity. Curb cuts shall be minimized. So section F, parking. To maintain a pedestrian-friendly environment, motor vehicle parking spaces. H. H, I'm sorry. It's H. I can't even read my own writing. Shall be located behind or beside buildings whenever possible. Parking located directly between the buildings in the street alignment shall be discouraged. Bicycle parking. Bicycle parking may be provided for other development it shall be located as close as possible to the building entrances. Any so property? Yeah, it may. Yeah. May. He said may. Oh, he said shall. Oh, did you say shall? Yeah. I wrote may. I had may open it. Any property required to have bicycle parking may establish a shared bicycle parking facility with any other property on within the same block. Subsection J. Sustainable building design. It is desirable that new buildings incorporate green building techniques such as those developed by the U.S. Green Building Coun Council to the maximum extent feasible. Section 17.50.080 approval. Site plan and design review approval shall be granted upon termination by the site by the planning board to the planning of the following objectives. <coughs> the board may impose reasonable conditions at the expense of the applicant, including performance guarantees to promote these objectives. Section A. New building construction alterations and other site modifications shall be designed to enhance the traditional downtown character of the Winter, Winthrop Center Business District by Section 1, addressing the characteristics of the specific location by the proposed land use and design of the building form grading, egress points, and other aspects of the development. 2, building design that is compatible in scale materials with existing downtown, including historic structures. 3, maximizing pedestrian connectivity. Four, minimizing visual intrusion by controlling the visibility of parking, storage, or other outdoor service areas viewed from public ways or, residential, or other residential uses. Five, minimizing glare from headlights overspill into adjacent properties into the night sky. Six, providing accommodations for car sharing and bicycle usage. Seven, ensuring compliance with provisions of the zoning bylaw, including parking and landscaping. 
17.50.090 regulations. The planning board may adopt at duly noticed meetings its regulations for site plan and design review. The board may also develop and adopt guidelines for site plan design review to support this bylaw with the approval of the town council. 17.50.100 laps. Site plan and design review approval, which has been granted pursuant to this bylaw, shall lapse within two years from the grant thereof, except for good cause. 17.50.110 appeal. Decision of the planning board shall be filed with the town clerk. Any appeal for project not subject <coughs> to a public hearing shall be to the board of appeals. For projects grant for site plan review, design review, approval after notice public hearing, appeals shall be filed in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 17. To a, to a court of competent jurisdiction. Does Council Baroni want to? Uh, no, I'd like, like to waive the reading. reading. <laughs> 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 but we can't can wait the reading. I mean, we can't wait can the can 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 reading. Can 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 that's not a motion. Yeah. 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 Speed reader and Harris. Seventeen point five zero point one two zero. Special permit granting authority. We're designated as SP in section seventeen point. 12.03 table of use regulations the planning board shall act as a special permit granting authority SPGA in the Senate Business District when a project requires both a special permit and a site plan and design review these reviews will be held concurrently and will follow the time schedule required by Mass General Laws chapter 48 17.50.130 17 process the Planning Board shall act pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 9, Special Permits. Any application for a special permit must indicate the section of the Winter Zoning Bylaw under which the special permit is sought and state the grounds on which it is requested. The application is to be filed with the Town Clerk, stamped by the Town Clerk, including time and date, and a stamped copy submitted to the Planning Board by the applicant. Within 65 days from filing a completed application, a public hearing will be held by the Planning Board. Failure by the Planning Board to take action upon a special permit within 90 days of the close of the public hearing shall be deemed to be a grant of the special permit and the town clerk shall so certify. The time limits may be extended in writing by mutual agreement between the applicant and the Planning Board. The Planning Board may seek input, input from other appropriate board, town boards and agencies and shall not take final action plan until such reviewing agency has transmitted a report or until 30 days have lapsed without receipt of a report. 17.50.140 Application Material See Section 17.50.050 Site Plan and Design Review applicability for required materials. Requested materials are specified depending on the size of the project. The planning board may waive the submission of specific information or request additional information. 17.50.150 Relationship to other project reviews. Applicants may submit a site plan that has been prepared pursuant to Chapter 17.44 if this review precedes submission to the planning board. The planning board reserves the right to request additional information and it is not bound by prior approvals under this chapter. 17.50.160 criteria. Subsection A. Special permits may be granted by the special permit granting authority only upon its written determination that the adverse effects of the proposed project will not outweigh its beneficial impacts to the Senate Business District and the surrounding area or the town. Subsection B. In addition to any specific factors that may be set forth in this bylaw, the termination shall include consideration of each of the following as applicable. 1. The project is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the Winthrop Zoning Bylaws. 2. Community needs are served by the project. 3. The impacts of the project on the central business district character. 4. Vehicular and pedestrian flow and safety, including parking and loading, are suitable for the site. 5. Existing or proposed upgrades to public utilities and other municipal services will be adequate to meet the needs of the project. 6. There is a positive potential economic and fiscal 
fiscal impact to the town, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. Section 17.50.170, conditions. Special permits may be granted with such reasonable conditions, safeguards, or limitations on time or use, including performance guarantees, as the planning board may deem necessary to serve the purpose of this bylaw. 17.50.180 fees. The planning board may suggest reasonable administrative fees and technical review fees for the application for special permits to the town council for approval. 17.50.190 lapse. A special permit shall lapse in two years if a substantial use of construction has not begun within the two years except for good cause. Section 17.50.200, Rules and Regulations. The Planning Board shall develop rules and regulations for the administration of this section for approval by the Town Council. 17.5.210, Parking Requirements for the Center Business District. The following provisions are applicable with the Center Business District. A. Misuse projects. 1. For misuse projects, parking requirements for residential use are studio and one bedroom units, 0.75 space per unit. Two bedroom units, 1.25 spaces per unit. Se section 2. Commercial establishments and mixed use projects shall refer to that portion of the structure or lot developed with non-residential uses. Subsection B, shared parking. Notwithstanding any other parking requirements as, as set forth in this bylaw for individual land uses within the center business district, when any land or building is used for two or more distinguishable purposes, including joint or mixed use development, the minimum number, total number of parking spaces required to serve the combination of all uses shall be determined in the following manner. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to try to figure this one out. <laughs> uh, subsection 1, multiply the minimum parking requirements of each individual use, see section 17.20.070. <coughs> Center Business District by the appropriate percentage as shown in the parking credit schedule chart below for each of the five designated time periods. Add the resulting sums from two. Add the resulting sums from each vertical column. Three. The columns having to, having the highest total values, the minimum shared parking space requirement for that combination of land use. Four. The calculation shall be reviewed and approved as part of the site plan design review process. I'm not going to read this. There's actually a, a formula of different times of day, different structures, different types of things. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to read, but it was actually developed and reviewed um, by, uh, planning the, by yeah. the planning board. Just by just the, the, the title. Sorry. The yeah. sections are weekday, midnight to midnight, midnight, midnight to 7 a.m. Uh, day weekday daytime 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Weekday evening 5 p.m. to midnight. Weekday 6 p.m. day <coughs> weekend day 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekend 6 p.m. to midnight. Um, and there's ca categories for residential, office, industrial, commercial, retail, hotel, restaurant, restaurant associated with hotel, entertainment, recreation, daycare facilities, and all other uses unless documented is submitted by a registered engineer. Section, what I, I didn't Subsection, that Subsection C. Okay. Additional reduction in parking requirements. Required on site parking Stop may be reduced by 10% if one of the on site spaces is dedicated to use by a car share service and an agreement with a car share service to place a vehicle at that site is provided as part of the site plan approval process. Subsection D. Fees in lieu of parking. <coughs> in the center business district, any commercial or mixed-use structure that is required to provide parking spaces 
may make payments to the town of Winthrop in lieu of providing for all or part of the on-site required parking. Payment made to the town of Winthrop in lieu of providing some or all of the required on-site parking spaces for a project in the center business district shall be allowed by right, subject to the site plan and design review. A one-time fee of $2,000 per parking space is to be paid prior to the receipt of an occupancy permit. Fees in lieu of parking shall be deposited into the Town of Winthrop Downtown Parking Reserve Account to be used for expenses such as land acquisition, design, engineering services, construction costs related to adding parking spaces, improving the utilization of existing parking spaces, signage, parking management activities, or reducing the need for new parking to serve the center business district, such as bicycle parking and improved transit. Requests to appropriate funds out of the reserve account shall be filed with the town council. Subsection E is required parking and that is section 17.20.070 Center Business District shall govern the requirements for off-street parking. Thank you, Councillor. Move that this be approved. <laughs> coming from <laughs> <laughs> coming from committee, there's no need for a second. All any discussion on the motion? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, abstain. Council Latiri abstains. Yeah. Council, um, you weren't here when we recognized Council Von Corey, the fact that the very comprehensive work that you and the planning board did in developing and improving and changing this and we yes. appreciate that. We, we had a rules and ordinance meeting uh, 21st at 7 p.m. Uh, most of the councils were there. We had six councilors there and uh, the entire planning board was there and it was quite a lively discussion. And uh, yeah, we, it was a three-hour meeting almost. Yeah. No, again, thank you. That's a comprehensive big step forward. Yeah. Council Sanford. And, you know, for people who are listening to what we just read, it may seem more cumbersome or, or complicated, but there's actually more understanding about from developers and, and people going forward with projects uh, going forward. And uh, we should lessen the actual time to, to get through the process with maintaining responsible uh, projects as we go forward. So it's an exciting uh, move in the forward direction. Thank you, Council. Yeah. Vice President. And again, I just want to say that this wasn't just something that happened in the past few weeks. This has been going on for years. Yeah, well, <laughs> the thought was going on for years, but I think in about yes. the past six to nine months, it's really right. become a, a, a topic that's been worked on. And um, and this just wasn't done on the side of the, of the creek. Um, we had the Metropolitan Area Planning Council assist us. Yeah. We had the UMass Collins Center Collins assist Center. us. Yeah. Um, this was professionally done. Um, it was reviewed. It's, it was something that was haphazard. It just um, we may, you know, sometimes it looks like we go fast when we do these things at this stage. But there's been a lot of work that's occurred um, with a lot of independent parties looking at it also. Yeah. And Thank you again. We, if yes. we could, could we just name the planning board if you yeah, don't mind? And there, it was just yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Anna Merced, Gina Demento, uh, Bob Carroll, Peter Roach is uh, chairman. Vinny Zapula. David Proctor and uh, Dave uh, Stacio. And if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. No, that's but Carol. Did you Carol? Carol? Um, Bob Carroll. Bob Carroll, I did, yeah. Okay. But professional architects and professionals in their field and, and dedicated to making this happen. So we appreciate all that. They did a fabulous job. Yeah. They, they really did. Okay, thank you. So we, you need to read that again or anything? Or? No. no. <laughs> okay. No. And the, the limousine thing is, is still on yeah. Yes. Still on yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the trash ordinance review uh, motion that I had last <coughs> meeting that Council of Terry postponed, I'd like to withdraw. If my second will withdraw the second. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and what we did in that is we uh, sending out a reference to the rules that were applicable in the water bill, along with Steve as a, as a statement that's going out in the water bill. <coughs> Under <coughs> I had skipped over correspondence only because we didn't have any, but just to be official. Uh, under, if there is no further old business, we'll move on to new business. <coughs> be there in a second. From the town manager, we move that the council transfer 
$18,070 from the sale of land property fund, 853, to the general fund for the purpose of funding a special article for the library building improvements, maintenance, or take any other action <coughs> relative thereto. Do I have a motion? <coughs> Motion by Council Dovin. I'd like to make the motion. And Mr. President, I'd ask that we do this as an emergency motion. Uh, we've come to find out that the existing fire panel at the library is non functioning and needs to be repaired. And I think for safety's sake, um, that we could turn this as an emergency action. Just as a, as a, a, a point of order, we make the motion and then a I'll second make the motion. Then then we have a second. Second. Second by Council Terry and then your discussion. And I'd like to amend the motion to include to make it an emergency action where, as we've recently found out, the fire panel, fire alarm panel at the um, library is, is outdated, not functioning, has been for several months, and we, we need to get that repaired right away. So I second the amendment. Motion's been made and seconded uh, for, for an amendment. Um, the amendment is that we do it as an emergency motion. Correct. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Council? Just a question as to why the sale of land account? Because it's a land improvement type of thing, the money can come out of there. As well, well, I know that it can, I know that it can come out of there, but why not uh, somewhere else? Mm. Tim, was there a rationale? Um, actually, Council DeVento was, was going to just try it uh, a few months back, and uh, so we created the motion based on that recommendation. Okay. Council Mill? Yeah, I, I would prefer to see that come out of council reserves. So right, let's go let's go back to the amendment first and, and we'll vote the amendment, then we'll get back to the discussion on the main motion. All those in favor of the amendment that this be considered an emergency, therefore it doesn't go to the finance committee. Um, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Yeah. You don't want it to be considered an emergency? I don't think so. No. Okay. Thanks. So it's uh, eight to one. Okay, go ahead, Councilor. Well, I'm going to speak on it. I, I had spoken to the um, library director recently about some improvements, and we do have the sale of land account, which is for capital improvements of our properties. You sell a property, and then you can work on an asset <coughs> with the proceeds. Um, it's an available fund. Um, it's a long, they're both long term um, capital asset um, purchases, which that fund is designed to be used for. Is there any further discussion on the yeah. main motion? No. Councilor, that, that being the case, we have a capital a we have a capital assets fund also, and, and this is in a sense a capital asset. And to me, I think we've tapped that sale land account down to, you know, you know, I just don't see it. To me, I'd rather take the money out where I see it more often, make where it amendment. hurts a little more. Huh? You want to make an amendment? Make an amendment. We have a discussion on what the why it was coming from there. So if we want to do it through an amendment, fine. If we want to do it through, a, you know, the uh, so the did council mail. Do you want to make an amendment that the that the funds come from the capital improvement as opposed to from the sale of land account? Quite frankly, I'd rather see them come from the council reserve. Let me hear your your and I'll make a motion. I would like to make a motion that comes from council reserve. Okay, so you would amend the motion that the source of the funds be council reserve. Is there Correct. a second to the amendment? I'll second that amendment. Seconded by Council of Barone. Is there any discussion on the amendment? If not, all those in favor. Right. Oh. I'm sorry. Can I ask um, Tim what the balances are on each of those accounts? Yeah. So for the um, sale of land, uh, there's $478,000. And in the uh, uh, capital capital stabilization, there is four hundred thousand. Council, council, council reserve. Council reserve is one hundred and fifty. Okay. So is there any further discussion on the amendment? Did it come from council? Oh, wait, can I just have to? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just just as a reminder, keep in mind that council reserve is the general fund fiscal year fifteen uh, balance. That would be current year. Uh, versus using the special revenue funds. Right. Okay, so we're on the amendment that it's going to come from Council Reserve. Council Reserve. Is there any further discussion on that amendment? Yeah, how much are we talking on this? 18070 $18, dollars. I I would prefer to really like to see it come out of a capital fund. It is a capital asset, it's not an operating expense. Um, to start tapping uh, council reserve now before we come into hurricane season, storm season, fall cleanup, uh, snow puddle season for next year. Um, I'm sure we could utilize that $100,000 $100, very expeditiously 
with those those situations. So I'd like to see if it come from Capital County. At the council. I agree with that. Okay, so at this point, Council Mayor. Do you have something also, Councilor Terry? Or? I, no, I was just going to concur with Councilor uh, Davento that I think this is a prudent use of the sale of land funds, and, uh, and I think it should remain where it is. On the I, on the council, I actually think it's a prudent use also, but I also think that when you take it out of council reserve, you think about it awful long and awful hard, and I don't like to take from my peggy bank. So I've got this money saved away in these other funds for what I consider to be. You know real severe issues we put them there I like to keep them there they're almost like you know in a special area when you take money out of your accounts reserve you're, you it makes you think all the time you're doing the right thing you're doing the right thing and I think you need the scrutiny on every budget not that we don't need it everybody's for it but to me this this hurts a little bit more because it's out of your operating fund you have to think a little bit harder the next time you do it and I think when you go to these these capital you know like the sale of land Geez, at one time there was $2 million in it. Now you're starting to trickle that money away for a long, and, and we still have 170000 that hasn't been returned to us from that fund, I think, from the school, because we fronted them some, or whatever it turns out to be. But to me, you know, that was a fund that had a couple of million dollars in it. Now we're down, you know, way below half of that. So when you take it from your pocket, you're a little less likely to, you know, be frivolous the next time, and that's my fiscal approach to it. Is there any discussion on the amendment to use the source of funding the capital reserve fund? If not, all of I, the, the oh, sorry, it's, it's, sorry. it's not capital reserve. Was to use the I council reserve council, fund. I have a comment. I wrote Cal council, but I wrote <laughs> council reserve fund. Is Cal there any discussion on yes. that council council amendment? Council. I, I have to concur with my councilor here, uh, Mel here, that uh, I, I agree with everything he had to say. Any further discussion on the amendment? If not, all those. What, what, read the amendment again now. That the source of the funds yeah. will be the council reserve fund. Council reserve fund. As opposed to the original being land the sale use of land. land. Is there any further discussion on the amendment for the source of the funds? If not, all those in favor of the source of the funds being the council reserve fund say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. No. You want to roll? Let's do a roll call. <coughs> Councilor Callow? No. Councilor Stanford? No. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Barone? Yes. Councilor Terry? No. Councilor Boyajan? Yes. Councilor Mayo? Yes. Vice President Davento? No. President Gill? Yes. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Too late. 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 Yeah, the uh, Phil's got to read his thing all over again. We need to read his thing for one weekend. If necessary, being on the prevailing side, I will move for reconsideration of the book. <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. Does the council go along with me, Jake? Mistake. Sorry, it it's, it's, yeah. yeah. The amendment did not yes. yes. Okay, all those in favor of the main motion. Council President. Yes. I'd like to amend the main motion okay. at this point to, uh, that the source of funds come from the capital of, what's the name? Capital Stabilization Fund instead of sell of land. Second, let me. Is that capital assets? Cap capital yes. stabilization. Motion by Council of Baron, seconded by? Second. Council of Boyage. Boyage? Okay. Any discussion on the motion, I mean on the amendment to take the funds from the Capital Stabilization Fund? Mr. President, as the maker of the original motion, I'm fine with the coming from Capital Stabilization Fund. Yeah, is that what we want? No. So we're just going to pick up Council of Boyage. Hold. Hold. Process is, if that's what you're comfortable with, then we will vote that amendment and then the vote as amended. Okay? Yeah. Councilor um, Barone made a motion seconded by Councilor uh, Boyajan to take the funds, make the source of the funds the capital stabilization fund. Is there anybody, any discussion on that? Get the question. Not all those in favor of the Almost. amendment. Say aye. 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 All those opposed? 
It's unanimous. Wait. Uh, no, hold on. Just, sorry, but I just want to make sure for purposes of the minute that it's fund 964. We have a number of ca uh, capital. Whichever okay. one you tell us we need to use. 964, you got that? Yep. All those in favor of the amendment to use fund 964, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All those in favor of the main motion as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, thank you. We, we, <laughs> we have a motion to <coughs> instruct the town manager to send comments and concerns regarding the Atlantis Marina expansion to the Army Corps of Engineers on or before July 30th, 2014. I'll take any action relative thereto. Do I have a motion? Motion, motion by Council Latiri, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Council Boyage. Sure. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah. Council. I instruct the town manager to send comments and concerns. Whose comments and concerns? We haven't discussed it. I sent you a draft. Yeah, um, but we haven't voted on anything, so I'm going to take my prerogative to put this up. The, by putting this off to the next meeting, you in effect nullify the. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they won't get any notification. So, my so you. You don't want the council to send a letter. A letter to the. Okay, then. We, then we will have a special meeting next Monday. Okay, but we have not even discussed what the comments. We can discuss it right now. You got the draft. We can discuss it now, or we can have a special meeting Monday. You, you missed the public comment too. Pardon me. Yeah, I think we missed it. Council. They were here. They were here. They were here. There was public comment. <coughs> and the, were they ready the, to? the comment of the public comment. <coughs> are we sending the public's comments? Are we sending our comments? Are we sending the town manager's comments? The planning board's comments? Con comments? Whose comments are we sending? We have not well, done it, have, so it makes no sense so to me. Well, we put off the, to Monday night if we should discuss it Monday night. We can do that. If, if everybody wants to have a meeting Monday night, that's fine with me. Let me just check the camera and see what's on there. The purpose of sending out the materials to the council was so that the council would be prepared to have a discussion tonight. The comments that were made in public comment tonight were very much in concert with the comments that were made in the in the draft that was sent out. The comments that came from the planning board verbally, planning board, board of appeals, conservation commission were all the same comments that were in there. I saw their comments. Pardon me? Whose comments are we sending is what I'm asking. We're sending the There's comments. going from the council that the council should have, should have had the first full discussion before the motion comes to us. And, and that's why I'm opposed that's, to That's that. fine. If that's what you want to do. I just want to make sure that. Monday, July 28th is a school committee meeting that I will leave to, to be here. Unless you. Yeah, I will go to the school committee meeting at 630. I hope they're not putting it in here. I hope they don't have it booked in here. Can we discuss now? We'll make our meeting at 7.30 on Monday. That work? Special meeting, 7.30 Monday, at which point... Um, that letter has to go out by Tuesday. Okay, so 7.30 Monday... The you see school committee on 28 the it is mm -hmm. but we have no choice if we don't have a meeting on Monday night we don't have a letter going up by the third I, I have the calendar up I don't see the, the school meeting. committee meeting was just called special meeting oh. okay 730 Monday here I don't know what space are you going to use I'm going to use this space but the school, school committee I'm going to make sure the school committee is going to be done They have the room booked for 6.30, but um, I will double check with them that they will be done. Because they, they ha they're having a special as well. Okay, 7.30, Monday, July 28th. <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, so that's postponed for that meeting. All right. And um, anything else under new business? Under appointments. 
Tom Schlichting's constable appointment expired and um, it was an oversight and I would like to reappoint Tom to uh, an expiration date of June 30th, 2017. Could I have an aff affirmation on that? Motion. Motion. Motion by Council of Terry, seconded by Council of Sanford. Callum. Callum. Callum, sorry, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. unanimous, thank you. And the next meeting, next regular meeting, is scheduled for the same night as the the police um, motion away so from the rules. And no, I think what we're going to do is tell them to change the fire the police department. No. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have a motion to waive council, council rule 2A? Motion. All those in, in any discussion, if not all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Well. It's unanimous, and I will move the. Are we just no 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 I'm not opposed but are we just eliminating every meeting? No, we're doing I'm we're gonna, gonna have one meeting in August. Well, do we need the meeting. Yeah, that's a good idea. Why don't we just do that? Because meeting. we're going to have a special. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. okay with like me. To amend the council rules and just move so we will on. cancel the meeting of October of the first week. Of August, the first August, one. August. So August fifth, we will cancel. And good night. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah, if there's no further business. Does anybody have anything on a public, public comment? comment? Yes. Council? I do. First of all, um, I, I wouldn't do it as a motion, but I would like to ask one of the acting um, peoples here if they could instruct the IT director to send in an email to every one of the council all of the passwords for all of the town buildings so that as we move from building to building, we have the opportunity to be sure. logged sure. on and yeah. take the information that we want. So you're talking about the IT, the wireless? The wireless, yes. That would include the E.B. Newton School, the COA, the, the Cubbings, the public schools, and the town hall, both of them there. And I would also ask that if there is a problem that the, um, that the school committee authorize us to have the um, the school ones also and I would be willing and I assume other people on the council would also be willing to offer the same courtesy to them as they come to our buildings so and, that's and while you're asking if stuff asking when TV is that we pass the motion <laughs> uh, that's fine that's the way. Um, then what was the uh, I'm sorry what were you looking for council passwords 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 yeah the master yeah. list master list yeah. Could, could you take care of that, Tim? Yeah. Okay. J well, j just as a thought, seeing that emails are public uh, domain, if you, maybe a, a written note would be would be more appropriate. All right. In response. In response, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I'd second that if that were a motion. It's not a motion. We don't need it as motion. Right. Council mail. Also, um, last year, I'm going to put her on the line here, Councilor Cowler and I went off and offered um, gift cards to people that uh, planted the spots in front of their house and I've been cruising around town offer goes up again this year I've been cruising around town and um, I will uh, Councilor Del Vento there's a nice woman up the top of your hill there that's got quite an operation going on the side of hers and I've been looking around so if you know people that have done that and planted it up that's um, that's very very nice and if you don't mind, I would take a couple of minutes to review what we saw yesterday when Councilor Caller and Council President Gill and myself, along with uh, the Commissioner Allegui uh, and uh, Joe D, went to a FEMA meeting in downtown Boston uh, for about three hours. So for everybody that is, um, everybody in town should know that it is my feeling, and I believe the feeling of the rest of the council, that the FEMA flood map issue is something of dire importance to every <coughs> individual in town. And it is your own responsibility to seek that information out from your insurance agent and from your bank. There are some very tight deadlines that come into play. And if you miss these deadlines, you could affect the insurance values. Um, there are deadlines that are coming up. The town is watching them out for them. The town is um, working with through MAPC, the same people who did our uh, planning on the planning board, working with a different group at MAPC to make sure that we are in compliance. And we are also teaming with Boston and Revere and Chelsea, I believe, um, to make sure that we can appeal and put our uh, best foot forward. If you can 
Over the next couple of weeks, I will get up on my website all the available links that you need. But the one you can go right to now is to FEMA.org. You can put in your property and you can see to a relatively high degree what type of area you are in. And there is a code for the zones. And the one that I don't think they clearly state is the EL, which stands for the elevation for which they will be projecting flood water could hit. So I believe the school zone was an EL 14, which meant that if properties over 14 feet getting an elevation certificate would be able to get reduced rates. There are many elements that go into this, including a restructuring of the Bigger Waters Act, which is getting rid of some of the subsidies. There are multiple ways that you can get insurance, but um, I will try to get as much of this up. The town is gonna try and get this up. The EPA, the, the FEMA group has three public meetings which happen in a 90-day window for Suffolk County, which means the several million of us that live and the several hundred thousand of us which are affected will have to find our way to one of three meetings to um, get up on this. There is grandfathering available for people who take a proactive approach to it. There are other options such as elevation certificates, which individual areas can think about getting. But the overriding fact remains is that the town council nor the town of Winthrop can be responsible for the individuals in the town. And we have to have our, the onus is on ourselves as individual property owners to make sure that we are all completely and fully aware. Uh, we are going to be setting something up uh, one insurance agent in town has already had a conference call with FEMA. I suggest the other insurance agents in town, either individually or collectively, through the council president, through Joe D, through the, um, through the uh, town manager's office, reach out to FEMA so that you can do a good service for your, um, for your clients. Because it's an important issue, whether it's delayed or implemented more quickly, it's not going to go away. It's something we all have to live with is uh, members and owners in a coastal region. And again, it's our own responsibility individually. So I say that as Ringo would say with peace and love and hope everyone will go out there and uh, take a look and make sure they get the right information. Bottom line on it is we are not experts as a town council and it's a very strong recommendation that you know that this is an issue and that you check it out with your own insurance person. Don't count on websites and so forth and so on. Check it out with your own insurance person for his or her um, input. Linda. Um, the website is actually going to change on Monday, and I do have a current website and how to navigate through it. It's not as easy as just going on FEMA.com, so I will work with Council of Mail to get that information correctly to everyone. We do have contact people. We have the phone numbers. They're very willing to speak to the homeowner by phone, and I have pleaded with them, I've pleaded with them that out of the three meetings that are going to be scheduled in Suffolk County, that they have one here in Winthrop. So we're still working on that just to make it so that we could have the surrounding communities like Chelsea, East Boston, maybe come here. So we are working on that, but as Council Mayo said, it's very important that anyone who lives along the water who finds himself now suddenly in a flood zone, you should be proactive about it because if you approach them and you provide yourself with a policy now, a preferred policy that you can maybe predict, you know, how much coverage you want, then you're gonna be grandfathered in later on when the flood maps become permanent. So it is something that anyone who has waterfront property should really start to pay attention to. Any further comments? Yeah. Chief? Just, um, as we said earlier in the night, um, the Olympic Marina issue is also a matter of litigation and hands on separate issues. Um, so you just want to be careful when you come to the public and consider a, uh, an executive session um, on that because we have other issues that are, that are on the same trail and track um, of the Army Corps of Engineers. And, and also I think it's a um, responsibility of the town manager's office to um, articulate a response as it particularly and relatively uh, addresses the violations in the uh, of our policy procedures and wants. Um, of, of, so the town manager's office should also start to look at and draft their separate comments 
So we have a timely response, and if the council then votes to add comments, then those comments then can be added after Monday night's meeting. Right. My, my, my plan was <coughs> that he would draw it and come to us, and we would, as you said, yes, we would add comments. Yes. Yeah. Will he be back? I mean, yeah. Will he be back? Yes. He yes. will be back Monday. Yeah. So he's going to have to spend Monday doing it. And should, should we be in executive session? Is Chief I mean, my, no, I I just had stop for a couple more pages. We can shoot him a quick email yeah. to get a quick Probably decision back. Yeah. yeah. Might as well schedule an executive session. All right. So, Denise, schedule. when you yeah. will schedule that with an executive session with that yeah. standard language? Yep. Yeah. That way it's never covered. Okay, good idea. Um, yeah. I was going to say, we should really congratulate our fire department, police department for getting that grant, that $250,000 grant. That's absolutely yeah, that's incredible. That's great. That's wonderful, great work. I, we wish we could, you know, the speaker was uh, the, the front person on that. He secured it for, for this community. We're very pleased and appreciative of, of his yeah. efforts. Right. Thank you. Thank David. you, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, just two additional comments. I talked twice to Mr. Catelli of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and he said he didn't want to hear from the city, so I assume he was being honest about that. Yeah. He looks forward to hearing from you. On the other matter, I attended a number of meetings of the planning board, though not the last meeting. It was a thoughtful and comprehensive process, very admirable. Site review and design review is terrific, and the plan's terrific. It takes a lot of monitoring and enforcement. It really, more so than simple zoning when it's easy to see when there's a violation. Site uh, review, design review has to do with materials, design, appearance, the size of windows. Developers have a tendency to try to avoid their obligations, their promises, and the uh, requirements of the site review. And the planning board of the town is going to need resources in, in order to, I think, monitor and enforce the decisions that are part of the site review process. Thank you. Thank you. Just as a matter of process, if there's no objection, we have to go back to new business. The vote on the 18,070 was supposed to be a roll call vote. So if we could go back and just take a roll call on the mo on the motion that the town council transfer $18,070. Motion to revert to new business. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? On the motion as previously voted, move to the town council transfer 187 from the capital fund property 964 to the general fund for the purpose of funding a special article for library building improvements and maintenance. Roll call vote. Council Callum. Yes. Council Sanford. Yes. Council Boncori. Yes. Council Barone. Yes. Council Terry. Yes. Council Voyage. Yes. Council Mayo. Yes. Vice President Delvento. Yes. President Gill. Yes. Thank you. Motion. So uh, just to, to reiterate on the meeting that we will have next Monday, then we are canceling the meeting that was scheduled for the following Tuesday. We will still have the meeting on the 19th, and if necessary, we'll call a special in between. All right. If there is, I will motion entertain a motion by Council of the Jury to adjourn, seconded second. by Council Vice President Del Vento. Any discussion on the motion? If all known of favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Aye. Thank you. Great. Oh, <laughs>